How am I going to do this? Evolution. I mean, I could start with... No, I couldn't start there. Or maybe if I just... Nope, it's impossible. How am I going to explain basically the evolution of everything? And why everything is the way it is? <sighs> Ugh. What, I don't have time to play right now. I'm trying to explain evolution. Ah, okay. I see where you're going with this. I suppose we could start with what evolution is. <clears throat> evolution is the change in the heritable traits within a population across generations. This is passed through DNA, which can be found in any living organism. DNA is a double helix chemical stored inside each cell, telling them how to grow and function. Each DNA contains coded information on how you are built. DNA is slightly different for each person, which is why no one appears exactly the same and acts differently. For example, the DNA might be coded so that you have a slightly longer limb. This could then be passed on to the next generation as it is coded in your DNA to be copied to your offspring. However, in nature, things aren't always perfect. No, 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 not, not you guys. I mean, when DNA is being copied, errors can be made, which can change the DNA code, commonly known as DNA mutation. This can then change the appearance and function of the individual, whether this be animal, plant, or human. When reproducing, the offspring takes traits from both parents. A sperm cell which contains half a copy of the father's DNA and an egg cell containing half the mother's DNA come together to create a new DNA code with a new set of instructions, enough to grow and form a new individual. The individual will mature to be similar to their parents, yet still unique as they contain traits from both parents. Can we get an example? Thanks. All dogs originally evolve from their ancestors' gray wolves. The evolution through the generations were guided by humans, but some evolution differences are far greater. Like, how did an elephant evolve from its ancestor, the ancient shrew? I mean, look at that! Oh yeah! Charles Darwin and Alfred Russell Wallace. These two discovered that a breeder isn't needed. There is a force capable of guiding random evolution to produce order and complex function known as natural selection, a process where the organisms that are better adapted to their environment tend to survive and produce more offspring. Survival of the fittest is also a term used to describe this, although this makes it sound like evolution only favors strongest and fastest. This is not true. Evolutionary fitness revolves around how well the individuals react with their environments. For example, the giraffe with the longest neck wouldn't be able to survive if there were no trees and only grass left to eat, leaving them at a disadvantage from the smaller neck giraffes who will then go on to reproduce, shaping the next generation. Don't worry, all is not lost. There is still a happy ending. As luckily for you, survival is not how evolution occurs. Reproduction is, as this is what begins the evolution process.